any quarterback can throw a pick six. Number 43, Doug Hart, turned the trick here for the Packers, who shut out the Bears 17 to nothing in week one. But Bears head coach Jim Dooley should not have to endure this. Quarterback Jack Kincannon tried to call timeout, but center Mike Pyle snapped the ball anyway. And linebacker Larry Stallings cruised 62 yards for an easy touchdown. The Bears played their home games at Wrigley Field with its ivy-covered outfield wall from 1921 through 1970. In 1921, they won their first NFL championship and would win seven more heading into the 1969 season. They had a seven-win, seven-loss record in 1968, which did not indicate the rude awakening that lie ahead for them in 1969. Although there was a little bit of good, so let's start with that. Gail Sayers had a terrific 1969 season as he led the NFL with 1,032 rushing yards and 236 carries, although he would only carry the ball 36 more times for the rest of his career. After the dust settled, Sayers finished with 14 carries for 96 yards and this touchdown. Gale Sayers was pretty much the entire Bears offense. And the defense was all about number 51 middle linebacker Dick Butkus, who was the heart and soul of their team. Bears defense allowed only 86 yards of total offense to the Steelers.
At Detroit, Butkus displayed his usual mauling tactics on enemy ball carriers. Bears held the Rams' high-powered passing game to only 110 yards. For the bad. Douglas had an extremely strong passing arm. Here it was accurate, but it wasn't consistently, as his career completion percentage over his 11-year career was a sorry 43%. In 1969, he rushed for 408 yards on a whopping 8 yards per carry. Most NFL pundits point to the Bears' woeful quarterback play as the reason for only winning one game in 1969. Quarterbacks were sacked 55 times, almost four per game, and they only had three games of passing for more than 124 yards. They had eight games less than 100 yards and five games less than 50. They threw 11 touchdowns while throwing 21 interceptions and not surprisingly, they were last in the NFL in points scored with only 15 per game. Let's see what else the original Bad News Bears were up to.
The Vikings pummeled the Bears in week four, 31 to nothing. They only had eight first downs in the game. Here, number 26, Clint Jones, stiff-armed. Number 37, George Youngblood. Jones had 88 yards on only three carries. Eve Osborne had 79 yards on only 12 carries. Late in this game, a 25-yard Mac Percival field goal would have tied the game at 20, but it was wide right, and the Bears lost 20-17. to Percival only made 8 of 21 field goals and missed all of them from greater than 40 yards. In 1968, he had led the NFL with 25 made field goals. Bobby Jewel Green punted 14 years for the Bears, most of them without a face mask. 970 career punts, he only had three blocks, and this was one of them. <laughs> Bears played the Rams tough, but this miscue cost them the game, as the Rams kicked the winning field goal to make the final score 9-7.
Number 24, Jimmy Thomas torched the Bears with his 75-yard touchdown run and a 75-yard touchdown catch. The 1969 Bears defense finished 12th out of 16 NFL teams in points allowed, an average of 24.2 per game. Their point differential was a minus 9.2 per game. The Bears were shut out twice, scored three points twice, and scored seven points twice. Brian Piccolo was an undrafted free agent from Wake Forest and played for the Bears from 1966 through 1969. He removed himself from a game after scoring a fourth quarter touchdown against Atlanta. He had difficulty breathing and was diagnosed with embryonal cell carcinoma. He died June 16, 1970 at only 26. A made-for-TV movie entitled Brian's Song debuted in 1971 that detailed his story. <laughs> 